Recording is on. Uh, so, so, good evening to all of you, and uh, uh, thanks for joining in. As you know, today's topic has been what makes Carnatic music Carnatic. Now, it's obviously very difficult to make a statement that this is what makes a music of a particular genre. This is what makes this music being called as Carnatic or something like that. Yet, there is one aspect of Carnatic music. If you remove it, it becomes something else. And that aspect is the Gamaka aspect. That's what we are going to talk today. Because Carnatic music means a lot in terms of, you know, the compositions and uh, the Manodharma, etc., etc. Those are all more the performance aspects. The musical aspect as such is about the role of Gamakas. And that's what we will see. How that makes our music Carnatic music. Now, Gamakas are not unique to Carnatic music. They are part of the Indian music scene, you can say. They are there in Hindustani music and they are there in Carnatic music. The thing is that the type of gamakas we use in Carnatic music is quite different from the type of gamakas they use in Hindustani music or shall I say the proportion of such gamakas being used. We use a gamaka, the technical name would be Kampita Gamaka, which is like uh, oscillation on a note. Amira will explain this in more detail. Whereas Hindustani music tends to use a jaru a lot, which is how they slide from a note to note. Once again, we'll hear Meera give more details about this and demonstrate these to us. The approach to the note, the approach to the gamaka is what distinguishes between Carnatic music and Hindustani music. In order to understand the gamakas, we also have to understand what a swarasthana is or what is arohanam, avarohanam of a raga and so on. What is, a, what is a note? What is a scale? What is a swarasthana? These uh, things need to be understood in order to understand the gamaka. And for this, you require someone who has a lot of what you would call knowledge on this, who is a practitioner and who can give us clear idea of all this and Meera is one such person. So I will hand this over to Meera to start this about the Gamakas. So most of what will happen today will be from Meera's side. Once in a while I will interject to give you a more layman's view of what the whole thing is. But the more technical view uh, will come from Meera. Yeah, Meera. Thank you, sir. So. Yeah, so uh, I'm I'm still learning uh, new uh, gamakas, new ragas, and all that. So we're all lifelong learners here. Just to clarify, um, it's just that I've, I've probably spent a little more time learning these things. So I, I from a student and uh, uh, performer perspective, uh, let me give you my insights. Um, so. You would have heard people when they start learning, most of you would have heard either through your own experience or through others' experience or through some form of media that first thing that people learn is something called Sarali Varse, which goes like, Sari Pad. You would have heard this, right? Padanisa, this, this thing. So this particular uh, start that we give, um, to students is a very um, note by note sort of start. You don't you don't uh, get into the finer aspects. Obviously, you can't start teaching uh, straight away things like uh, big words and uh, when you're teaching English or some language, you start with the alphabet. So keep it simple, that sort of thing. But eventually, what happens is um, when you are moving on to a, a more sophisticated, so to speak, uh, sort of compositions, this sort of uh, note by note approach uh, doesn't cut it. 
so there is something beyond the notes that we start looking at so uh, the same sarigama padani sa let me give you a, an example the same thing let me sing it in kalyani what we here usually is an another raga called maya molagode what i just sang let's look at a more familiar example which is kalyani so uh, in order to uh, sir can i start doing the demos now yeah yeah i think you should and uh, once uh, from there no you can uh, illustrate how the gamaka comes in and so on right so let me uh, yeah let me just okay uh, do you see the piano thing sir all of you hopefully yeah i uh, yeah i see that yes okay you hear the sound i hope yeah okay cool okay i'm going to explain this with a uh, piano keyboard just to understand the difference between what is just plain notes and what is uh, gamaka so i'm going to play the scale of kalyani scale as in what are what is the alphabet of kalyani that's that sound okay um this is how kalyani uh, this this is the spelling of kalyani so to speak mm. so but how much of kalyani can you i mean how much do you actually get uh once you listen to the actual gamaka version it it becomes different so mm, so, so what i just played is sa re ga ma pa da ni sa sa ni da pa ma ga ri sa what kalyani actually is is mm, sa re ga ma pad ni sa sa ni da pa ma ga ri sa i'm trying to sing in the same pitch as the piano so please don't mind my extremely low voice but uh, just to make it easy for all of us so yeah so as you notice there are movements between the notes so to simply put it this this so sa re instead of sa re when i'm hitting the note directly sa re is re it's coming in from the ga sa ga re the re is dropping in from the ga so that sort of movement is not possible on a keyboard piano uh, unless you're using something special like a pitch bender people have modified it and things but in a regular piano keyboard that is not possible because it's not made for carnatic music as such um uh, so this is a very very simple example of a gamaka so one um, important rule sa and pa right sa pa these two notes which uh, uh, incidentally is sung in every class uh, sa pa sa pa sa why do people sing that in a music class because they are called the adara notes like the base notes like the root sa is the most important there is nothing without the sa and the pa is equally important if not more so it's always good to get into a good sort of mode like a good uh, tune attune yourself to those notes and then start uh, singing so even in concerts right uh, you may have noticed the uh, the curtain will be uh, down and uh, they will be tuning tuning is basically act, uh, like uh, you know uh, kind of getting yourself and your instruments in sync with that sa so important that notice so the sa and pa typically do not take any gamakams i mean the sa at least will never take any gamakam pa also mostly will not take any gamakam it may like uh, take a jaru like which i'll explain in a bit but these are like unshakable notes to for our understanding let it let us take it that way so will all the other notes move it depends on the context 
usually not every knot will move if everything is moving so if i try to apply you know okay let me give like gamma gum for every single knot of kalyani so let's see how it how it sounds except sign pa sa 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 re ga ma pa da ni sa that's like a bit overkill it's not wrong it's a bit overkill so it is so usually my guru what they have told me is sa re ga ga becomes you know like a straight sort of note then ma so that takes a oscillation ma then pa is so it becomes like an alternation of straight notes and gamma ka sa re ga ma pa da ni sa da ni uh, kind of come close, both take gamma ka but mostly not every note if every note starts taking gamma ka it becomes like a, it becomes like too much of sugar you know that sort of uh, effect so the practitioner should know the student practitioner performer should know where to give what sort of gamkas how will they know this is through composition that's why it comes as a year uh, what do you say karna parampara right uh, oral tradition guru to shishya guru to shishya shishya to next uh, generation of students that sort of thing so that's how it is evolved and comes that was a very very simple intro to gamkas um so do you want to uh, should i say something yeah. else in the kalyani context or uh, just uh, i wanted to just tell them one thing see yeah. uh, uh, if uh, mira you can play the uh, first sa and upper uh, octave sa if you can i don't mind the sa and the sa the yeah sure so yeah just that is that's the sa mm-hmm. and then the upper octave sa see yeah sa this is one sa this is the upper octave sa uh, between sa uh, sorry between these two notes uh, including the first note but not the last note we have 12 uh, places there if you look at the piano you will see a white black white black white white black white black white right so between these two there are totally 12 notes this is something which is very surprising not because it's 12 but it's the same set of notes that were discovered in uh, western classical music this is a piano is western classical music it has the same 12 swarasthanas we call each of these notes the white key or a black key as a swarasthana and as meera said sa and pa are swarasthanas which will not have any gamakas others can have gamakas and meera will explain much more in detail uh, how each raga takes what gamaka but the idea is these 12 swarasthanas are common for uh, indian music and in western music now in indian music i also want to tell you that uh, the carnatic music while it was evolving at the same time we also had tamil music and tamil music also had the 12 swarasthanas Uh, that is independent of what was uh, what were the texts in the north north had lot of texts of those time like bharatas natya shastra and all south also had some texts on music like um, i think this was ilangwadigal uh, silappadigaram silappadigaram talks about these 12 notes and they actually do it in terms of a circle with 12 segments in the circle and the first segment is sa and then they describe the raga in terms of where the dancers stand in each segment as to which is a swara so <laughs> as to why 12 swarasthanas why not more why not less and why the octave the octave is simple to the ear the lower shadja and upper shadja have you hear it as the same except that it's maybe at a higher volume or something like that but otherwise these two notes are ear perceives to be the same therefore in an octave we will have multiple swarasthanas this is more i think based on aesthetics because if you have too many of them that are close to each other then you are your ear may perceive that as a dissonance so this you have to understand the 12 swarasthanas with two fixed swaras but every raga typically contains only seven notes out of the possible 12 that's again a rule that we all follow of course some ragas taking extra notes in special circumstances uh, but 
in a normal circumstance we have this maximum of seven notes going up coming down this concept of going up and coming down does not exist in western music in the sense they just have they just say we need to play these seven notes that's all for us because we have this combination where we go up with a uh, we may go up in a different order come down in a different order and so on but you understand that these are the 12 notes with two notes fixed and out of the 12 we can only take seven notes yeah mira right sir um do you want me to play any specific video or uh, trying to understand uh, what yeah maybe you can we can play that uh, varavina gana lola or shakti saita ganapati many one of that yeah yeah gamaka i think this one uh, one where uh, yeah i think suguna yeah yeah that's a simple so, song Shankara just Bhandu. one minute uh, meera can you explain to them what is happening and then we'll play some other shankara bhajan so no i didn't get that sir sorry what, no, what can you that? can you explain uh, how hmm. the notes here are flat and and then why why, why how oh, okay. uh, it will change sure. in the other song yeah. sure what am i saying both by tag rather okay so um so shankara varanam is uh, what we call uh, i mean the scale is kind of like the equivalent of like uh, the major scale so to speak but uh, i won't say if uh, shankara varanam is equal to the major scale no so sa the scale itself sounds like this sa di ga ma pa da ni sa sa ni dha pa ma ga di sa this is like plain standard so something like do re mi fa like how they have in western music is also going to sound exactly the same um whereas a gamakam for uh, gamakam also i can explain also yeah yeah please yeah there is a gamakam for shankara varnam which we will listen to after this uh, this particular song that we are going to listen to is going to sound like an english uh, melody uh, plain notes there is shankara varnam the actual raga in in its in all its glory goes uh, in terms of its uh, arohanam avarohanam which is the ascent and descent like this sa sa ri ga ma pa da ni sa sa ni da pa ma ga ri sa as opposed to sa ri ga ma pa da ni sa sa ni da pa ma ga ri sa that sort of thing so uh let's listen to uh, the first plain english music inspired yeah tyagaraja and dikshit have had inspirations from the british uh during the british era so uh, in fact dikshit has composed like more than i think 30 35 english notes there is a whole segment of stuff that he's done we we'll listen to this one from tyagaraja as for me very much interesting ಮಧ್ಯಮ ಶ್ರುತಿ ಐತಿ ಗಮ ಪ ಪದ ದ ಪ ಪ ಸರಿ ಗ ಗ ಗರಿ ಗ ಮ ಗ ಮ ಗರಿ ಗರಿ ಸ ಸರಿ ಗ ರಿ ಸ ಸರಿ ಗ ಗರಿ ಗ ಮ ಮ ಪ ಮ ಗ ಸರಿ ಬಿ ಸ ಲೈಕ್ ದಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಗೋಸ್ ವರ ಲೀಲ ಗಾನ ಲೋಲ ಸಿಂಗ್ ವರ ಲೀಲ ಗಾನ ಲೋಲ ಸುರ ಪಾಲ ಸುಗುಣ ಜಾಲ ಸುರಪಾರ ಸುಗುಣ ಜಾಲ ಭರಿತ ನೀಲ ಭರಿತ ನೀಲ ಕಳ ಹೃದಾಲಯ ಕಲ ಹೃದಾಲಯ ಶ್ರುತಿ ಮೂಲ ಶ್ರುತಿ ಮೂಲ ಸುಕರುಣಾಲ ಬಾಲ ಸುಕರುಣಾಲ ಬಾಲ ಸುಕ ಸುಕರು ಗರಿಗ ಸುಕರುಣಾಲ ಬಾಲ ಸುಕರುಣಾಲ ಬಾಲ ಬಾಲಯ ಸುಮ ಬಾಲಯ ಸುಮ ಬರಲೀಲ ಗಾನ ಲೋಲ ಸುರಪಾಲ ಸುಗುಣ ಜಾಲ ಬರಿತ ನೀಲಗಳ ಹೃದಾಲಯ ಶ್ರುತಿ ಮೋಳ್ ಸುಕರುಣಾಲ ಬಾಲ ಪಾಲಯ ಸುಮ್ಮ ಲಗ ಬೇಟು 
sing all the charanams suravandita apta brinda suravandita apta brinda varamandara dara varamandara dara sundara kara sundara kara kundara dana kundara dana indumuka indumuka sanandana sanandana nuta nuta nandananda nandananda nendira vara nendira vara suravandita apta brinda ramandara dara sundara kara kundara dana indumuka sanandana nuta nandananda nendira vara ranadera sarvasara ರಣನೀರ ಸರ್ವಸಾರ ಸುಕುಮಾರ ಸುಕುಮಾರ ಬುಧ ವಿಹಾರ ಬುಧ ವಿಹಾರ ಧನುಜ ನೀರ ಧನುಜ ನೀರ ಕರ ಸಮೀರಣ ಕರ ಸಮೀರ ಕರುಣಾರಸ ಕರುಣಾರಸ ಪರಿಪೂರ್ಣ ಪರಿಪೂರ್ಣ ಜಾರ ಚೋರ ಪಾಹಿಮ ಜಾರ ಚೋರ ಪಾಹಿಮ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಟ್ರಿವಿಯಾ ಹಿಯರ್ ದಿಸ್ ಆಕ್ಚುಲಿ uh band sort of thing where they used to play the uh, britishers used to play this band and in this these were a small uh, songs which both dikshidhar and tyagaraja uh, were inspired to uh, compose on this particular tune this tune i think is like the bear went over the mountain the bear went over the mountain what did it see the other side you know that's the tune that is actually uh, same thing like shakti sahita ganapati there's one more Uh, in in uh, dikshidhar's uh, they call it as notus varam there also he has composed the same bear went over the mountain uh, it's just exactly yeah. the same tune uh, that they have done yeah yeah, yeah mira you can play the yeah, yeah. yeah. so even um, even the uh, actually dikshidhar as a uh, young boy was supposed to have come to I think fort st george in erstwhile madras so i heard there is a story i'm not i think it is true so uh, he heard the bands the british bands playing there and he composed quite a few the yeah, i have an entire book with his notes or ups so um so in that there's one called uh, santatam pahimam sangeeta shyamale i think that's the one which is basically the british national anthem god save the queen or king or whatever so basically set to sanskrit lyrics so all those are plain notes this let's listen to swararaga sudha same tyagaraja composed but in chakravarnam in all its glory just one thing to note swara ra is like sari ga right those are the notes look at the kind of movement there sari ga ಸಾಧ 
You want to say something? Uh, no, I just wanted to uh, just uh, expand on what you said earlier. See, Please. in Western music, uh, um, Mira talked about major scale. In Western music, uh, they call it as a scale. And uh, as I said, in a scale, uh, they typically have seven notes, but in the 12 swarasthanas. And they don't uh, specify arohana, arohana type of thing. And this particular scale which uh, Meera sang first and showed you and uh, Varalila Gana Lola that is known as a diatonic major in uh, the western world and there are lots and lots of pieces of western classical music in that scale. So you will see F major, C major all of them are Shankaravaranam. It's just that not Shankaravaranam I would say all of them are major scale just that where they start where the Sa is varies. Then Teja had asked another question, like when we said we had Arona and Avrona, is the order specified? Yes, the order is specified. How you must go up and how you must come down. An example of that could be the Bilahari layer that Meera played last time. The Bilahari, when you go up, uh, you follow the notes of Mohanam. And when you come down, you follow the notes of Shankaravaram. Though it doesn't sound like a combination of Mohanam and Shankaravaram, mm -hmm. the rule is given. That is how you can go. Sometimes you go straight like Sarigama. Sometimes you go Sagariga. I mean, Ananda Bhairavi and all, when Meera will explain, uh, she'll explain that. But this is what I wanted to say. And uh, I and Meera were discussing that a lot of times you will see uh, musicians telling that scale is not a raga. Mm -hmm. So what they are basically meaning is this. If you sing a scale, you will not get Shankaravaranam of Carnatic classic, or you can get one version of Shankaravaranam. Shankaravaranam uh, will then be about how you sing the Gamakas, right? And therefore, this is also very important for you to understand because somewhere, sometimes you'll hear that scale is not a raga. Uh, sometime maybe we'll do a full fledged uh, session on how does a scale become a raga, right? And more. Yeah, Mira. Yeah. So I just wanted to point out a couple of things in this Semagodi Mama's uh, Swara Raga Sudha. So he sings, mm, sa, Swara Raga. I don't know the song, but Oh, Oh, Manasa. Once he sings that, Oh. So <laughs> the notes that finally that where it lands is actually Ba and Sa. The first one is Oh. Pa. So I just told you, Pa doesn't take a gamakam, and also Sa doesn't take a gamakam. These are actually not gamakams. These sort of things. These are like, uh, what do you call? You start from Sa Pa. That sort of thing. It's like a more like a glide sort of thing. But the note itself doesn't shake. Finally, you are going and landing at the Pa, or going and landing at the higher Sa. Those notes themselves. Uh, do not have any movement. So the movement is oh, is like starting from sava, that sort of movement. Then oh, it's like pasa. Sorry if it sounds funny, but just wanted to point it out separately uh, because we said sa and pa do not take kamakas. This is uh, this doesn't really fall under the usual uh, perception of kamakas. That sort of thing. Um, of course, when we are listening, we may not know that is pa, that is sa, but eventually when you spend a bit of time in these things, you know, these sort of questions may crop up. So just have it at the back of your mind so that uh, some someday all this will come together for you. Um, so that that's one thing I wanted to point out. Um, scale is not a raga. This I've uh, discussed with uh, 
trash here a few times, but uh, I wanted to bring that up. Uh, when people t talk about either Western music or uh, even cinema music, right? Anything, anything that sounds like, you know, that has those notes. So um, I, I remember uh, even I have done this as a younger person when I was uh, in school or something. Um, uh, this Vasigara, I, 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 I let me give myself as an example. Vasigara song from Minnali, I think it came. I was I was a student in um, uh, of music and I was in school like heavily uh, loving that song. So it sounded so I, I had this tendency to make that song into a. a what are the swarams? Okay, that is re the smaller variety, you know, and the ga that is this variety of by variety I mean the either is it the black or the white note for the re that sort of thing. So I would start doing that, uh, and I would say, oh, okay, this is nada by re, but it is not. If if you like later I realized, dude, this is not nada by re. This is just this has those same notes. It has shivali deva senapate is nada by re. This is not, Vasikara is not that. I mean, it took me like a few years and a bit of maturity to, you know, understand that. So when people say, oh, that is not a Bhairavi, this is Harikamboji, that is Sahana, I mean, I mean, uh, take it with a pinch of salt when you hear such things, uh, uh, you know. But not to say that, that all cinema music doesn't have, uh, there are some very pure versions of amazing ragas uh, by all sorts of composers. So. This is a very gray sort of area. So uh, I would encourage you to kind of take it with a pinch of salt. OK, they said that sounds like Nata Bhairavi, or they said it sounds like Hare Kamaji. Let me actually see if it sounds. Go listen to a Carnatic composition. Uh, a a Shri Valli Deva Senapate in Nata Bhairavi will sound nothing like Vasigara. So just putting it out there. My own mistake, I, I kind of realized it over a period of time. Just wanted to share that with you folks. Um, Sir, anything on that? Uh, yeah, I'll also uh, say something on the similar line. There is a Western rock song called Melissa by this band called Allman Brothers Band. And uh, initially, it's it's a, it's an uh, instrument. Um, and initially, it starts with the guitar and then the piano takes over. And when the piano takes over, um, he plays the notes of Mohan. Uh, I think the song is in major scale, but... Uh, within Shankarabharanam, the notes of Mohanam are present. So they play the notes of Mohanam and I was listening to it and I was feeling, oh, it sounds so much like Mohanam. My mother came along and I told her, this sounds like Mohanam. And she listened to it and said, yeah, this is Mohanam. And then my, my friend came, uh, who was the one who introduced me to the song called Melissa. Then I, I told him, this sounds very close to a Carnatic Raga. And then I played Mohanarama. Uh, a popular uh, Veena Venu violin with uh, Lal Gudi sir and uh, Ramani and Ramani, Venkat Raman. Uh, so that was uh, 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 Mohana Rama. And he, he said, they don't sound anywhere close to each other. So uh, because one side they're playing the notes of Mohanam. The other is very Gamaka laden Karnatic Mohanam. And uh, though they're both instrumental, he couldn't map it. I himself was a guitar player. So it's uh, something, as, as uh, Meera said, and somebody says, oh, this is uh, Nata Bhai Ravi. And if it's not a Carnatic song, we can say that it is on the scale of Nata Bhai Ravi. That those notes of what we call as Nata Bhai Ravi appear there. But whether it changes into a Raga is a different matter. Correct. Yeah. yeah. So always take such um, you know claims with a pinch of salt. I mean, I won't dismiss it saying it's a scale all the time. Uh, so it's putting a disclaimer there just to be safe. So sometimes they can retain the flavor of the original raga. Uh, I'm sure sir will also agree. They're beautiful compositions um, in cine music. Uh, so but when it comes to Western, most definitely uh, this is more true than not that it is a scale and not the raga. So uh, just wanted to kind of nail that into your uh, thoughts uh, because we it's a common enough doubts doubt that we all get as we listen um cool so let's take uh, another example of a raga so sir sahana okay sir yeah sahana run the very whichever one uh, you want both should be fine right yeah sahana is fine okay cool 
Um, yeah, going back to the keyboard, I hope it's visible again. So, yeah. I'll play the scale of uh, the, the scale or the skeleton of Sahana in this. So, sa sa re ga ma pa ma da ni sa sa ni da pa ma ga ma re ga ri sa. Actually, what it is is sa re ga ma pa ma da ni sa sa ni da pa ma ga ma re ga ri sa. See the difference, you know, it's like at least in a Kalyani Shankara Varnam, we were able to, we can say, okay, Kalyani, it sounds kind of like Kalyani only. This is impossible, right? So, um, so we call these, these are all like very old uh, or they have like a, some sort of uh, ancestry which came before, you know, things like classification of scales and all that. So, uh, so it's that sort of thing so sahana is that uh, anything on uh, sahana or sh should i try something else sir? Uh, no i just wanted to uh, highlight this with uh, teja when he asked uh, if you yes. guys had observed uh, the movement on the arohana and movement on the avarohana are not straight it's not sarigama padanisa mm -hmm. so uh, the, the technical term they call it as vakra raga vakra means it's sort of convoluted so you see the movement and maybe Mira, just quickly you can mm. explain to them where and which of the swaras the gamakas happen uh, uh yeah it will be wrong to sing it linearly if you sing it linearly you will get a different raga uh, uh, uh yeah Mira, uh, I, I think you can take the question yeah so, so teja um singing what linearly the arahunam avarahunam uh, arohanam avarohanam again it's not even if i sing it with the gamakam it's not equal to the raga next next step uh, scale is not equal to raga now okay fine i'm not singing the scale i'm giving gamakam sure but you're singing gamakam you're singing the arohanam avarohanam that is not equal to the raga itself so it just gives a chaya like a shadow of the raga so it's to show that is a very common phrase in sahana the arohanam is uh, uh, like a like a suggestion of the raga so mm. so that is not there i'm doing a jump from the ma to the ni the arohanam doesn't give you all that but it just gives you a shadow of it uh, so if i sing um, linearly okay Mm. This is, if you look at it, uh, this is a uh, scale of Hari Kamboji, which is technically the parent raga, if you want to call it. Let's not get into that. So that is Hari Kamboji, basically. And it doesn't sound like Sahana. At the end of the day, we want Sahana to sound like Sahana. How does it sound like that? That, that ga has such a higher place. So these sort of things are there. There's a even the, the same ga has a like micro uh, you know changes. Not no that sort of, it, it it is a little more, it takes a bit more of gamaka from the ma, that sort of thing. So uh, so if I sing does it sound like Sahana to me? Whereas that only that gives me sahana, not magarisa. 
uh, adavadhu no okay notes are just frequencies but a raga is an emotion yeah you can you can say that yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. And Sahana yeah. and all, the, the, it came before, you know, like probably before, you know, you put such classifications. I don't know. I'm not a historian. I'm just guessing. Yeah. I hope I answered your question, Teja. Sir, or, yeah. over to you. Yeah. So, Teja, yes. Uh, to uh, quickly answer your question again, what Meena said, and that you can't sing it linearly. If you sing it linearly, you should technically get Harikam. Uh, other thing which uh, Meera said, which I uh, want to emphasize, is that the Gamakas and, uh, or let me put it this way, in uh, Carnatic music, except for Sa and Pa, other notes are at frequencies, right? The, those frequencies that are defined are like Indian standard time. In the sense, somebody says, mm -hmm. I'll come at 6 o'clock. What that person means is, he may land up anytime between 5.50 and 6.50, right? 6 is just an indication around that time uh, that person will reach there. Our swaras are also exactly like that. So when she says Gandhara in Sahana is slightly higher, it means that though the mm. actual Gandhara position, that is if you put it in piano, you will have a certain frequency. For Sahana, you must sing it at a slightly higher frequency. Now, these cannot come in the piano. So, this, how Correct. do you know? You learn from the Guru only to hit that particular frequency, which is not exactly the specified frequency of Gandhar. You hit it a slightly higher place. I, I just wanted to tell a small incident. This happened a couple of years back, I think, when Aruna Sairam got the Sangeeta Kalanidhi. One day, the great uh, musicologist S.R. Janaki Raman had come. So after that, after the leg dem, he is coming out. So I was just talking to him and uh, his daughter was there. She said, "You can you be with him? I'll just go and get the car. I said, okay. And I was talking to him and I told him, you spoke about the Sahana Kriti, Giri Painala and how a different version is sung by a particular musician. Then he told me, uh, the start, or he said two ragas, I don't know, it must be a riga or something like that. He said, see, these two notes appear in all the ragas, like in Charukesi it is there, in Shankarabharnam it is there, it is there in Arikambudi. But when you sing this ri and ga, it is sahana. You don't need any other note. That means for these ragas, as Meera said, have been there before this framework came in. The framework of Arohana and Avarohana, before it came in and became a scientific way of looking at ragas, before the framework, the ragas like Sahana, Ananda Bhairavi and all were there. And that's one of the reasons Meera took up this ragam to tell you that there are a lot of old ragas which have now we tried to force fit in a uh, framework. And when they say Gandhara, this Gandhara is very different. Yeah, most of the Rakti ragas as uh, Meera said. Yeah, Meera. Yeah. So by Rakti, what I mean is um, they are very, very, it's very hard to like kind of push them into a scale. So, mm, you can't sing Sarigama Pada Pada. What is the scale? What can I, how can I sing it linearly? No way. Yeah. It just moves uh, like that. I, yeah, yeah. Uh, Meera, uh, I want one, uh, uh, small interruption here. Sure, please. Uh, no, Meera sang that uh, Aravanam. What was the raga? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> maybe, uh, <laughs> maybe you can sing one, one second. Yeah, once again, uh, Meera, you can sing that Aravanam. Ah, yeah, sure. Mm. Sagari Gama Padabasa Sani uh, yeah. uh, no, Prasad, you just missed it. Uh, we told you, no, that's a confusion. Uh, that's uh, Riti Gaula, Chinnakandan. This is Anand Bhairav. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, many of you... Uh, uh, yeah, uh, Riti Gaula, Anand Bhairav, confusion is... Um, it's, 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 it's understandable, understandable. Correct, correct. Uh, 
So, I, I, but what I sang was Anand Bhairavi. Yeah, so we'll give you some marks uh, <laughs> for this. Sahari uh, Gama That sort of thing is Riti Gole. Okay, so coming back to this, um, guys, you should, uh, I encourage you to revisit some of these, not just those who guessed Riti Gole, but everybody to re keep revisiting the playlist. This is like a long process. Every time I say this, but I just want to keep reiterating it. So don't worry if you don't have it correctly. It, it's fine. We all, uh, we have all done these uh, mix-ups. So anyway, so what the point I was trying to make was, how, how how can you fit it under like say sagari gama pada pasa sani da pa magari sa plain i don't hear on the very big marive that jaru ni pa sor da pa magari ga that that ga, see, it, it has no stana, no no position. Ga. It's basically moving between re and ma. It has, it's it's like, uh, it, we, we, if you get into metaphysics, right, it's kind of like the soul. You can't say where it is, what, where, what, how, and all that. So, ga, ma, ma is plain. Ma, pa, ma, ga, di, sa, pa, ma. That tunnel is, is like beautiful gamakas. You cannot uh, quantify it. Uh, so that sort of thing. So again, it's like a movement. It's not like a, uh, it's like a movement from pa to sa, but it's not like a proper gamakam. That sort of thing. Um, so do you want to add something? Uh, no, I think that was, that was good. And maybe yeah. you can just uh, tell them what is uh, the jaru. Uh, which when they can hear sometimes, right? Now, whatever you sang, uh, what? Sa, so, yeah. Sure, sure, sure. So, that sort of, that, that sort of, you know, that sort of, um, that sort of movement. I mean, it's hard to describe. Um, uh, let me give you examples of a uh, couple of more types of things. You may have heard, uh, 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 actually, in the swarara, so that sort of that sort of that sort of thing. It's it's called like a briga or like a spritam sometimes. So you. Uh, you would hear people do such things. That sort of thing. So that's that's like a briga. Um, jaru is like this waterfall type of. From ma, it's moving. That sort of thing. Um, so we saw two names. Jaru. Br Jaru is the waterfallish sort of thing. Briga is that sort of like a, it's like like a, what do you say? Um, lightning flash. Yeah, lightning sort of like thing. So uh, that sort of thing. It it feels more uh, uh, like a uh, light lightning flash sort of thing. So uh, these two um, things. Then uh, Varali, sir. Yeah, please. Okay, this is also like a. Uh, remember, if you were part of the Varali session or if you've checked out the video, I spoke about the Vivadi thing. So, this will clarify that also in case you had some confusion. Um, I need a. Yeah, I need this for that because I don't want to play it wrong. Okay. Okay. Okay, I'll just go for it. Mm. Okay.
So, sa, sa, ga, sa, ga, re, ga, ma, pa, da, ni, sa, sa, ni, da, ba, ma, ga, re, sa. So, scale or skeleton of Farali. So, Farali, if you remember, I said the ga, the gamaka for the ga is where the, the life of Varali lies. Pamaga, Padabamaga, Nirabamaga. So this will become Sagadigama, Padanisa, Sanidabamaga, Risa, Pamaga, Pamaga, Nirabamaga. Gama, gama, pa, gama, da, ga, ni, ga, sa, da, pa, a, ra, ra, ra. Only then you will hear Varali. Anything else is just skeleton, skeletal Varali. So, so one thing. Uh, so, if you notice, sir, do you want to explain the Vivadi note here? Uh, I can play it if you want. Yeah, so... Uh, the Vivadi note here, if you see that, she starts at one uh, one button, that is the Sa, and then she goes to one, right? So the combination is like this. You need to play one and uh, then two and two. then, yeah. So then, uh, you know, the, then it will be uh, different, like Q. So what you do yeah. is, so she plays the first note, that is the Sa, then she plays uh -huh. one and then she Q. These two appear next to each other. Typically, so the typically if you see one and Q, two and W, E and four, right? Phi and T, six and Y. These nodes, you know, within only like, for example, out of one Q, two and W, only two nodes should appear in a Raga when you are moving around. So 1, Q, 2, W. Of these, out of these four positions, only two positions are allowed. You can choose any two positions you want. Out of E and 4, only one should appear. Either E or 4. R is the path. So it will appear in a full Raga. Then between 5 and T and 6 and Y, between these four nodes, only two will appear. The choice is yours. Depending on what you choose, the Raga will vary. But if you choose... 1 and Q or 2 and W and there 5 and T and 6 and W that becomes a Vivadi Raga if that combination appears that is 1 and Q you you miss the two completely that becomes a Vivadi Raga or you can do 2 and W missing the 1 completely that is you go from the uh, that will become Vivadi Similarly, in the upper side, if you do phi and t missing 6 and y totally, then that becomes a vivadi. Or you miss phi and t and do 6 and y, that becomes a vivadi. So that's how the thing that is a black and a white next to each other, right? And missing the other black and white completely, that will be a vivadi raga. If you look at it from a very layman's perspective, from a piano layout perspective. Yeah, and the other thing uh, you would have noticed, how Varali came to life, the moment Meera sang that Gandhara, just the Ga, when she sang, Saga, she did, that's all, only two, uh, you know, uh, two notes. But if she were to just sing those two notes, you would immediately, your mind would go towards Varali. Uh, that's how unique the Gandharam of Varali is. Mira, if you don't mind, you can again just sing Saga of uh, Varali. Maybe they'll get a good idea. Is uh, Mira there? Okay. I'm, I'm just trying to see. Are you guys able to hear me? Yes. Uh, I think uh, we uh, we got. I think Mira is 
uh, uh, probably dropped off. I think she would join again. Uh, let's see. Is it? Uh, I'm just uh, I'm just looking at what's happening there. Uh, yeah. I think uh, she's probably dropped off. I think she'll she'll rejoin. I guess. Yeah. Chandar is here. Yeah, Carnatic 101. Meera, are you there? I let me see. Okay. I think, yeah, I think she is uh, moving out and coming in again, I guess. Uh, let me see. She is. I'll try sending her a message in a minute. Oh, okay, I think she just said I'll back in a couple of minutes. Now the PC is just crashed, she said. Okay, just to uh, uh, discuss this uh, further, since uh, the piano uh, picture, I think all of you are able to see. Uh, just discuss this further. As I said, the rule of forming a raga, uh, of what we call as a melakarta raga, is that we should select seven notes out of this 12 with certain constraint. The first constraint is that the first note that Mira used to strike, right? The first one where you have these arrows, uh, uh, the horizontal arrows, that note is a sa. So that has to be there everywhere, I mean in the raga. And the next note that has to be there is the R, which you see the R, that is the pa. So these two notes have to be there as a part of the octave. And third is between E and 4, which is the Madhyama, the Ma, you will be able to choose only one note, right? So this is the constraint. So you have Sa, you have Pa, and one of the Ma's. Now that means you got three notes. Then you have four notes to fill in for the Raga. And the rule is you do in the lower part two notes, upper part two notes. So in the lower part, you see that it is, as I said, no, one and two are in the lower part of this, five and six are in the upper part of this. So in the one and two thing, there are four notes, the black, white, two black, two white. So out of these four, you choose two. And in the upper side, again, out of the four, you choose two. So what happens is you get a combination of a 36 possible combinations if you choose the E as your Madhyama, you get 36 combination. And if you choose 4 as a Madhyama, you get another 36. So you totally get a overall picture, what? 72 Melakarta Ragas. Here the rule, as I said, they should have all the seven notes and they should go linearly in the ascent and linearly in the descent. No Vakra Sancharas allowed. So it has to be from the start to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 until you hit the final sa, so you have to have seven notes in the ascent and seven notes in the descent and they have to be the same notes. People have tried various things, having two madhyamas, one ascent, one descent and all, but nothing really caught because aesthetically this seems to be the most uh, pleasing sort of a idea and therefore this has been stuck. So you will hear this word called 72 Melakarta Ragas. Maybe we'll do it one day full fledged in the other case, but I want just giving you the idea. And that is what we call as a scale. Some of them have been existing before this proposal. This proposal came probably in the 16th century or something. Again, I'm not an historian there. There's one person called Venkatamahin who gave this proposal, but uh, his initial proposal was that either in the ascent or descent, put together, all seven notes should appear. And Vakra Sanjaras were allowed. So that's the Paddhati that Dikshidhar follows. They are called as Asampurna Melas, which means that they are not Sampurnam. They can be Asampurnam on the ascent, Sampurnam on the descent. For them, Milahari would be a full-fledged Mela Raga. Because uh, uh, in the descent, Milahari will get all seven notes. But in the ascent, it will have only five. But still it is considered as a, it could be considered as a Sampurnam. Whereas later day, I think uh, there was one Govinda, I think. Uh, yeah, Govinda. Yes, sir. Yeah, okay. Mira, you're back. So I just deviated from there because 
I can't sing and show them Gamaka because for me, Sa also will be Gamaka. So, <laughs> no worries, sir. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. You can maybe yeah, you can give some closing yeah. notes. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, no worries about the, uh, you know, the some of the technical things. I mean, these are all common things you will hear. So, it's a good thing that, um, I mean, that we are able to cover them. But uh, don't worry if it kind of went over your head because it takes a bit of time. But it's something you can look up very easily. You can play around with the, just Google for a virtual piano and, you know, play around with some of these ideas. It, it becomes more uh, uh, understandable uh, for for you and uh, so to come back to the idea of gamaka um, like sir mentioned it's it's uh, we have a very uh, unique uh, i mean gamaka itself is not unique to carnatic music but we have like some very special and unique sort of gamakas in our music um, so truly truly the swarupam or the true nature of araga comes through to gamakas and uh, uh, compositions and the whole uh, guru shishya sort of thing uh, is how these things are understood and of course the listeners play an important role um, because I, I've, I've actually listened to uh, there's been a recording of a, a very famous composer who sung he's not known for being a singer but he is a very famous composer was a very famous even now very famous so um, there is a recording of him singing a todi he must have sung it, I don't know, in the 40s or 50s or something. That that Todi was like, oh my God, unlistenable. Because the Gamakams were not what I'm used to know. The Todi has evolved so much in that 60 years. And uh, thanks to the recording era, I get to listen to a GNB Todi or Arya Kuri. All those, you know, uh, uh, the process of evolution I'm, I'm listening to, all of us are listening to. So, uh, but I listened to the pre-evolution or whatever sort of thing and it's, uh, I couldn't gra get it. But at that time, maybe it was in vogue. So these sort of things keep changing. But now I don't know if it will change too much because thanks again to the recording era. Now, oh, GNB sang it like that. Why are you singing it differently? That sort of, that sort of thing will creep up. This is my personal view. So anyway, as listeners, what uh, I would suggest is just yeah i mean just understand this at a sort of a uh, you know basic level no need to um, just understand simple things like jaru briga and that sort of thing don't worry about too much about the swarastanas uh, but if you get a, if you're interested and if you get a chance to play around with the piano and uh, read up about the melakatha and, and uh, all that it's yeah i would encourage you to do that uh, but if you had any questions we can take that as well so a uh, lot of history of Carnatic music, a lot of contentious things. So uh, yeah, that that is also something to remember. Questions, please. I'll stop sharing. Yeah. Uh, other thing, what I would uh, like you guys to do is uh, some of what examples that Mira gave would have been very clear to you in first shot. In some cases, you may or may not have seen the difference uh, very obviously. I think I could see, uh, you know, obviously in all of that. But when I was younger, uh, when somebody was demonstrating it, I it took me a while to adjust. So what I suggest is this particular episode, um, you should listen to it uh, once in a while, maybe once in three months. Listen to the portion where Mira speaks and demonstrates that particular portions, you know, you will start getting a much better idea once you get the grip of the raga. Because without the raga seeping inside you, some of what she says today may have, you may think I have understood, but then the real uh, depth of what she said would hit you when you have a good understanding of the raga. So this one episode, I would suggest uh, you keep coming back and listen to those portions where Mira has explained uh, the differences in detail, where she sung the scale and then with Gamakas. I'm sure, you know, you will get a lot more as time progresses. Yeah, right. I, yeah. Okay. I think uh, maybe, Vera, we should. Uh, Deja know, seems to have a question, sir. Oh, okay. Okay. I think I, I'm not see, seeing on it. You, you, you please answer. 
I I didn't see this. I don't okay. know why. Uh, I have a question regarding the mentioned Aravana Aravana concept on the Wikipedia page for Sintu Bharavids. Given as Aravana is given as not having the sub of the upper octave, what does this mean? Ah, uh, I don't know because uh, Sintu Bharavi first of all is not a Karnataki ragam. Secondly, Wikipedia uh, I wouldn't uh, I I don't know if it's a very authentic source. Uh, thirdly. um it may have been a typo uh, fourth um coming coming to i'll give you an example of a ragam called chittaranjani sari gama padani nirava magari sa that is aravana magarohana mapi where is the higher sa there is no higher sa this is all the ragam can so there is a famous composition nada tamunisham only one composition in this raga tyagarajas so you cannot sing na da so there is a mm, you can't do modakara niga modakara you can't do sa you can't hit the sa the composition will never hit the higher sa why has he composed i don't know he has composed it like that so you can't go above and you can't go below also the same uh, rule will apply to that also so and uh, there are some ragas like uh, punna gavarali and all which are sung from me uh, from the below me so I, i i'm sorry i don't know the scale but uh, those sort of things exist like i said it is a skeleton or uh, it's like a chaya some of these ideas of the raga you will get from the aravana varuna only the compositions will truly give you the idea of this wikipedia i don't know maybe so yeah, yeah what yeah, we can do correct navraj yeah. is right yeah navroj and all that they are all known as nishadantya ragas and other things are there matuma samgo uh, but what we will do is probably as i said um, maybe we'll have another session where we talk in detail about such ragas and uh, you know give you more details on that yeah there are again one more thing quickly sorry to extend this there's a raga called uh, saranga okay sapama padani sa it has both the maas in it. Regama is ma one, whereas sapama is ma two. Both are there. That's fine. Many there are many examples of such ragas. But from this, can I de- I can I decipher what the range of this raga is? No. What I mean by that is, I've heard so many musicians say you can't go beyond the higher ga for saranga. Where is Arohanam, Avarohanam doesn't specify anything like that. How will I know? How will I know is Dikshitar. Uh, if you look at some of the uh, musical works, written works, and also some of the compositions, it won't go. Sa sa pa mari mari. No, never. It will only go. Sa jari sa ni ma ala 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 ma ma va pa ma ra jana. It will only go till sa maximum ga. no and so when somebody is improvising they should do it in the spirit of the raga like that you can't go and do oh i can sing higher octave let me reach till sa a ra ra no no but so these sort of things we get only through compositions and uh, verified by our gurus and that sort of thing so so wikipedia i will always suggest you take it with a pinch of salt anyways sindhu bhairavi again like prash mentioned doesn't have a very strict sort of thing so i hope that kind of cleared your question teja um uh, yes ram ji sir uh, gamakas are primarily inspired nadaswara gamakam veena gamakam very famous a um, lot of vocalists are inspired by such things i think semangodi mama you will call him veena gamakam nane sir i i think so i'm not too sure yeah, <laughs> yeah a lot of those veena pdis he'll sing nada swaram is like singing with a lot of you know like a long passages that sort of thing uh, and imitating those sort of things they all borrow from each other so i i don't know if we can pinpoint it to one instrument they all uh, but if you see uh, dikshitar would have ma- mentioned in some of his compos- compositions like saying dashavida gamaka kriye veena he'll mention the veena a lot of course he was a vainika veena player so i'm sure he had his biases <laughs> he was biased towards the veena but the veena is a wonderful instrument which we mentioned in the uh, gamaka when we talk about gamakas 
yes so violin of course uh, borrowed it from the vocal tradition being a western instrument we try to imitate that sound and thankfully it's it's actually damn good for uh, gamaka reproduction as long as you can do it with proper technique okay really extended a lot i think uh, we will end it right here yeah please post your questions on twitter for the questions yes and uh, thanks to all of you once again and we'll meet up next week bye thank you everybody bye bye